I suppose it is past timing in a way, but just starting to open up that that communication and that relationship. Yes, because part of building up a, a therapeutic relationship is the easiness of communication. Yeah. Because if it's not complementary communication or complementary transactions, communication could break down, and that's uh, may may not help the building of a, a positive therapeutic relationship. <laughs>
and it's not been a pleasant experience for them and they've stuck with it rather than changing you know if it, if the relationship isn't working then i can understand why cure is not going to happen you know but they, they tend to stick with one through thick and thin even if the relationship isn't there mm -hmm. so then the next question for you jackie or the we're going to talk about is what is meant by the therapeutic relationship because it's a very different relationship for say a friendship yeah a romantic relationship or a business relationship you yeah. know we talk about a specific kind of relationship when we have the coy and therapeutic relationship so when i or when we talk about therapeutic relationship what does that mean for you jackie for me i think one of the big ones is trust <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah so you can have trust in business relationships can't you? you can have trust in um romantic relationships you can have trust in collegial relationships so what's different about therapeutic relationships i just think it's a whole different level of trust in a therapeutic relationship uh, okay. Okay, it's about so being consistent and you know having boundaries and you know showing up and doing what you say you're going to do when you're going to do it it's i think in in a business and a relationship you've got a bit of leeway in it whereas in a therapeutic relationship i think it's it's a bit tighter for me mm. i think the therapeutic relationship there's a different emphasis yeah so if we take the definition that therapy very much is about how the pa past affects the present i'm not talking about counseling relationship here i'm not talking about cbt i'm talking really about what i would call relational psychotherapy uh with the idea of the past effect or psychodynamic therapy the idea that past affects the present then therapists will be concentrating on looking at how the past affects the present so there's a, there's a certain focus yeah the other focus i think is for most people most therapists is on safety sense of safety um a boundary space a sense of containment and perhaps i want to say the most important but really important aspect anyway confidentiality yeah yeah that's that's really important confidentiality which to me all those things link into trust do you know what i mean that they they need to know that you know we're 100 percent in that room with them for the time that we're in there and you know the only other person that we're ever going to speak to is a supervisor about anything which mm. You know, for for some people, having that trust is is really difficult. Mm. Mm. You know, we can say that it's confidential and everything, but it's it's kind of proving that. And one of the ways I think in in transactional analysis and you know in my training is that we won't see anybody knowingly that are in the same circle as what that person is. Mm. Mm, especially the family yeah yeah and mm. th sometimes they don't like to hear that you know I've had you know a single person come to me that then wants me to see them as a couple or I've seen them as a couple and one person wants to come to me and you know it's it's blurring the lines for me mm. and they don't like being referred on sometimes no that's right Another aspect of a therapeutic relationship or therapeutic space or trust confidential is that there's payment. Yeah. There's another difference. Yeah. So you're paying for professional services, which means you're paying for accountability, you're paying for a trained, qualified psychotherapist, and you're trained for people who will put that hour um in your space what i mean by that is there's a space for a person to come and talk about themselves containment security you know confidentiality all those things and i think a therapeutic relationship is very different from any other type of relationship yeah yeah it's interesting because you know sometimes in the early days I, I don't suppose my friends do it now because a lot of my friends one they know what i do and two half of them are in the same you know, the job is what I am. 
you know friends would say when you go out are you like therapizing people are you you know giving everybody therapy wherever you are and it's like no because I don't do it for free you know or they'll say you don't do the therapy on me and it's like you have no idea how different having a conversation outside the room is to having a conversation inside the room until mm. you've experienced it yeah it's safe a space it's confidential all things we've talked about and it's and you're on their side and it's helping them look at how the past affects their present in terms of connections and behavioral processes and um you see one of the major prerequisites well no one of the major aspects i think of different type of uh, relationships is often past timing yeah which is very which is about what's happening in the present day like yeah. i started off the podcast with you talking about manchester city and manchester united and talked about various other things that's sort of as much as i like talking about those subjects it's much more past timing from in ta terms adult to adult ego state yeah whereas if it, if we had a if it was a therapy process we would be looking at certain aspects around change and health and improving mental health and looking at the past effects of present and the coping mechanisms and it, we would be miles away from past time yeah and like you say there's a definite plan to it there's a you know there's a a, a process to it we're not I know sometimes it, it veers off, you know, maybe what we had intended to happen in, in the session, but it's not just killing time. It's not just, like you say, past timing in that hour. There's mm. a process to it all. Mm. That's a good way. There's a process to it all. And the other thing is, of course, um, qualified therapists have used to been trained for four or five years on how to do therapy in that one hour if you like yeah. you know as a focused plan yeah oh training to be able to do the job um and it's a very different type of relationship from the other relationships we're talking about yeah so what what do you do to build the therapeutic relationship if if it's not if it's not there can we build it? I, I suppose i wanted to define the therapeutic relationship just to may it define what we're talking about and yeah. the differences between the different relationships now if we to just answer that question which is a really interesting question um because it's an assumption that if somebody comes to see you you have an idea or a criteria jackie about what's not a therapeutic relationship so for example for you to say what happens what's <laughs> how do you build the therapeutic relationship if it's not a therapeutic relationship now that is in your head somewhere. You must have some ideas of what of what makes up a non therapeutic relationship, which I haven't really. Okay. So for me, if somebody comes through the door um, and they've got that motivation, from the moment I see them and I take that on and have a treatment contract, then there's a therapeutic relationship. So I suppose I like to know that from you. But while I'm talking, I think probably contracts has a really big contracting has a big part to me yeah it starts the therapeutic relationship because if somebody comes in the room there's a there's a contract there's not just an admin contract or you know a payment contract um but there's an actual um you know there's going to be a treatment contract and that is the sort of if you like the start of the in inverted commas therapy relationship is that how you see it Yes, yeah, definitely. And and working through that contract and you know, yeah, I know I've said it in, in other ones. I ask for clients, you know, new clients to see me for at least four weeks and then reassess it after that to see, you know, how how they're doing with it. Oh. So I'm still interested in this bit about a non therapeutic relationship and what you meant by it. Well, I was thinking more about things that can possibly get in the way of the therapeutic relationship like triggers you know it, i i don't know when the client comes in through the door their past other than what they've chosen to tell me but whether i could potentially be a trigger for them being a female of a certain age you know if if it's a younger client 
that I might represent a parental figure to them. Those sort of things, you know, that potentially can, in the early days, get in the way of that therapeutic relationship. Oh, yes. Yeah. So that's, I think that's different in my head anyway, um, because I, that's about what I want to talk about, building up a therapeutic relationship. I think that once somebody comes in and we have perhaps two or three sessions or whatever way we look at it and we go on we agree on a treatment for change or a focus say let's make something up they want to be relaxed and more contented than depressed could be a contract yeah and once they've agreed that then we'll start the work and so i see it from the beginning uh, perhaps a good way to look at it is is developmentally there's a there's a relationship now, is it therapeutic from the beginning? Um, probably, because I believe in transference from the beginning. Yeah. Um, but I think what you're talking about is building up a positive therapeutic relationship. Yeah, quite possibly, yeah. Which means then you've got ideas about a negative therapeutic relationship, which is another interesting thing. But I, I think I'll go with what I think you're aiming at, which is what can you do to enhance and really um, clarify a strong uh, therapeutic relationship where a person is motivated to come. Uh, they have a, a, a desire and passion to change and they can utilise your services to the best possible outcome. Yeah. So that, that's, that's a good question. I think one of them, of course, is... Um, from the beginning to spell out what the contract is, spell out the therapy is. And I suppose I see it very much like a process, not an event. So for me, it's about, um, I say, getting the admin contract, the treatment contract, and then actually learning about their, their own histories, their script, what's brought them to therapy. And in that process, they're getting to know you at one level, as well as you're getting to know them. Um, and they're building up a, I won't say trust, but they're building up a certain therapeutic rapport with you. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> in a way, because it's a process, not an event, as you're doing the script analysis, as you're doing the treatment planning, as you're doing the whole process about how does the therapy factor the present, you're, you're allowing or encouraging that relationship to ferment and grow. Yeah. So if people listen to this can move away from the idea that suddenly, or they may not have this anyway, by the way, I suppose I'm assuming something, suddenly the person walks in the room and you've got a therapeutic relationship, um, then that doesn't work that way. I think as a whole process where you're doing the things I've just talked about to allow trust to build to allow, allow what I call the testing period yeah. in the uh, client and the therapist where they're usually testing out uh, the therapist in some ways according to their script. To all that to happen, um, we'll build up a safe space. Yeah. And I think it's interesting that you you mentioned the testing out because <clears throat> they, they do test out sometimes. Oh, yeah. oh. In many some ways, clients I mean, more than others. Some some clients do it for quite a while. <laughs> it's odd if they wouldn't. Yeah. Yes. You're a complete stranger to them. Yeah. So how does a person know if you can be trusted? If you could be trusted to be there? If you could be trusted to share their vulnerabilities? You could be trusted to share their intimate. Um, I would say secrets, but their intimate moments. Um, how, how can they ever get to that place yeah. that being a process and not an event? Yeah. And there are certain things, you know, again, maybe this is my stuff that's coming up about, you know, remembering names and times and things like that, you know, to allow the client to be seen and heard and remembered, if that makes sense. Oh, I think you're really, really important because, we're talking about building up a therapeutic relationship with this practical things absolutely a sense of curiosity yeah a sense of taking account of the person on practical terms remembering their names yeah remembering things that they've shared from one 
session to another session. Yeah. Um, remembering to be there at the same time every week. Yeah. Remembering to stop the session at the time that you're supposed to stop it, which might be 50 minutes or might be an hour or 55 minutes. And all those practical things which provide continuity, stability, safety, yeah. security, all those relational needs which are very necessary in building up the type of therapeutic relationship we're talking about. Yeah, which, you know, for me, I think that's one of the reasons why I never took on too many clients. Hmm. You know, it's it's a lot to hold in here when, you know, if you're seeing 20 plus clients in a week, that level of, of intimacy in the relationship and remembering, you know, the partner's name and the kids' names and all those sorts of things, it's it's a lot of information that you're holding. You are. And I remember I done it, it was a two podcasts back, I think now. And uh, we were talk about note taking. Yeah, uh, I think it might have been the one where we talk about effective habits. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, um, and you said that you, you kept notes, and I was saying that. Uh, but we both came around to the same thing, really, with, about taking notes after the session rather than in the session. Yeah, uh, and I think that's an important one if it aids memory. Yeah. So if you've got lots and lots of clients, you might need, for example to make some sort of practical notes after the session so that you can remember not only the person's names and everything else, but also what they talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Because just, you know, dropping that information in, in the conversation again, for me is, you know, safety and security that we do remember, you know, the information that they're giving us. It's not like, each session is a separate thing that, you know, there's a line running through everything. One of the things I do in the early days is to do a timeline as well. Do you want to explain that? Um, just to get an overarching view of the whole picture quite early on, you know, anything that sticks out for them and, you know, have they got a birth story? Do you remember your first day at school and what that was like? Just pinpointing certain things you know in their life again I suppose it is past timing in a way but just starting to open up that that communication and that relationship yes because part of building up a, a therapeutic relationship is the easiness of communication yeah because if it's not complementary communication or complementary transactions communication could break down and that's uh may may not help the building of a, a positive therapeutic relationship yeah and particularly for me in the early days you know when i'm seeing a new client that they feel comfortable that you know they're, they're talking about their life their their memories you know all, all those sort of things rather than going in tackling the topic straight on on the first session if that makes sense so it's just getting a background feel they get to know me a bit more and i get to know them yeah and on uh, on the back of this i might have to go and put the light on in a minute in this room but on the back of this is is an important one when we talk about therapeutic relationships it's the whole idea of transference in other words you know a transferential relationship or the repeated relationship or the needed relationship so if you think about relationships in transferential or psychodynamic terms then we might be uh seeing a positive therapeutic relationship in helping them enact out a different experience yeah therefore might encourage idealized transference where the relationship in this um what they didn't have as a child yeah so you know it's an interesting question when we say what but you know building up a positive therapeutic relationship so uh, a psychodynamic therapist would think about transference and for them a, a positive psychotherapeutic relationship is going to be one i think 
which provides a relationship they didn't have uh you know in a healing sense all those years ago yeah i think that's why but for me it is important to be seen and heard and things like that it's it's not necessarily reparenting but it's you know kind of demonstrating a different way that it can be done and then allowing them to move on with that if that makes sense I think I can be quite parental actually in the therapy room as I'm saying that I do think I am I am quite parental well again we're we're really now in the whole realm of a transferential relationship so for example I think most therapeutic issues people come with is often um, traced back to the source of um, difficulties and challenges uh, with their important significant figures and themselves mm. and usually again in psychodynamic therapy and transactionalized therapy if you're talking about transferential positive therapeutic relationship it's the to allow them to have an environment or space to project onto the therapist i.e., you or me or whatever you like to um a parental object which is different yeah in experience from their histories which are so toxic yeah it's a wonderful job that we do bob yeah but that's what i think you see that's why i started off what do we call the therapeutic relationship because i think a psychodynamic relationship and the way that i'm talking about we talk about a positive therapeutic relationship where the transference has actually been realized right whereas a cbt therapist for example if you call cbt therapist therapist if you know what i mean yeah um, then transference isn't in, isn't in their heads no um the past is not really in their heads it's all about thought change and thinking distortions and therefore their idea of a positive relationship will be utterly different from the idea of a psychodynamic therapist who believes in uh, what I'm just talking about in terms of transference. Yeah. Yeah, because transference in the room can be quite useful. It can be used in, in the room. It's very useful. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Mm. And I find it interesting when we, we compare and talk about CBT, because in my eyes, transference will be going on in that room <laughs> yes but it the, 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 yeah well you and i think the same and if the therapist is say cbt trained and doesn't really know about transference or use transference then or even if they do know about transference they won't use it yeah they'll keep to i'm going to use ta language i know they're going to keep to adult to adult conversations and transactions rather than think in uh, the way of transference or parental projections or child deficits they won't go that direction yeah yeah which is understandable because they're not trained in it you know it's, it's a completely different modality but yeah it's interesting i've never had cbt so i don't know what it's like in a room with a cbt well, you are right, transference will always be there yeah Ed, parental projections will always be there um transferential reactions will always be there from my framework and as the therapist hasn't been trained in any of that um they may inadvertently enact out transference possibilities however um the focus will be um adult or well be a solution focused yeah uh, be around behavioural change and thinking distorters, distortions. It won't be around anything to do with the history or child deficits. Yeah. Which is for a psychodynamic therapist or a transactionalist or a gestalt psychotherapist, that focus will tend to be there more. Yeah. Because that's the past affecting the, the present. Yeah. 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 So you've got a transferential relationship which is the formulation that they think about and that's what i think they would define a positive therapeutic relationship when that's being actioned yeah so it's an interesting 
discussion on what constitutes a positive therapeutic relationship. Now, if you come from a transferential place and you think that way, by an action of the past onto the present and all things I'm talking about, then you will do things maybe to um, encourage the transference. In other words, act out like the parent or not act out like the parent. You may do things which uh, encourage that transference relationship, which then they might argue is a positive therapeutic relationship. Yeah. Now, like you, I think transference happens anyway. It's whether you, the therapist is trained not only to understand transference, but to use it. For me, personally, I think you can have a therapeutic relationship without using the transference, and you can even call it positive. And you may do things like we've just talked about, accounting for them, a safe place, and all these sorts of other things. And that would build up trust and containment and continuity and stability and all those things we're talking about. However, for me, again, if I want to really use the positive therapeutic relationship i would be thinking about transference and how to action it yeah which build, builds a, a stronger relationship on a, a deeper level it's like you say you know somebody who doesn't that's not to say that change won't occur no no not at all that's right yeah. it's from a different place yeah now how interestingly i'm going to well, I agree about many things you say, Jack, but I'm going to go into another one. Those CPT therapists might not think this way, and that's fine, by the way, around transference. I think transference will already occur. And another debate, and maybe it's away from the podcast, is will CPT therapy be more effective if there's a positive transference, even if they don't think that way? Yeah. That's an interesting one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I... I... I sometimes wish or think that it would be good to experience from a, a you know, a, a client's point of view, different therapies to see, to see what they're like, because I, you know, you know, an awful lot about lots of different therapies. I don't really know that much about how it differs from transactional analysis. Cause that's all I've been trained in apart from person centered. I did a bit of person centered counseling um, that for me personally, was a bit wishy-washy mm. mm. well it's a completely different focus yeah mm. so so i think it is important i think to talk when you're talking about building up a therapeutic relationship to think about what we mean by the therapeutic relationship plus um i think that will be framed from our own training and how we see um the use of the relationship in the first place yeah yeah because it, you know it, it being that safe confined space it allows the client to test that out oh. Oh. to 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 be a different way in a relationship in oh. a safe environment oh. a word we haven't used by the way in all this is non-judgmental yeah see i think that's really important yeah building up a, the template or the ground for good psychotherapy yeah i think if you talk to most people what they really want in a therapeutic relationship let's say confidentiality they say non-judgmental attitude yeah. they say con continuity they think about stability they think about safety they think about the environment being in a place where it's not going to be invaded. And they'd probably talk about, you know, things like a warm place, you know, you know, a heated place. They talk about those early relational needs as a template for the nurturing of the relation with regards to the therapist and the client. Yeah. Then the next question will be, how do we think about what is a positive therapeutic relationship? You know, is it going to be a needed relationship from the past? Is it going to, you know, we could go on. And that is framed by how you're trained. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's a really interesting topic. Mm. Mm. You know, you, I suppose it's something that we don't always necessarily break down what it means. And, mm. you know. Well, another thing we haven't mentioned, the more I go on, I think what we haven't mentioned, <laughs> interestingly enough, is potency. Yeah. I think, again, what builds up a, a positive therapeutic relationship in the sense of what we're talking about is that the client experiences not only that the person takes account of them as curious and all the things we just talked about, but they're potent. Yeah. That they are involved with the therapeutic process. They have a sense of really being um, on the side of the client. Yeah. So the client feels really held and contained. They're the sort of prerequisites, I think, for the template of a positive therapeutic relationship. Yeah. What you do with it is another question. And how you see it is another question. Well, that that that's a question and a half because, you know, one of the things that I became aware of in the early days, you know, is that I am in that room as well and my my baggage is in that room. Oh, yeah. You know, Sometimes I explain it to the clients that there's probably half a dozen people in this room with us because you've got your parents in here and I've got my parents in here and you're in here and I'm in here. So there's a lot of people in this room. Yeah. Mm. Very interesting, Bob. Yeah, I enjoy talking about it. Thank you yeah. for allowing me to talk about this and break it down. Yeah. Mm. Which, like you say, it, it, unless you, you're talking about it as a topic, it's very rarely that we do look at what actually constitutes a positive, you know, therapeutic relationship. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I think it's vitally important because then you will know what isn't a therapy, positive therapeutic relationship. <laughs> yeah, they go yeah. together, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that, Bob. I've really enjoyed that. Good. Great. What's the next one going to be on then? Oh, the next one is the understanding of unconscious defences. Oh. The, which I think kind of follows on quite well yeah. from building yeah. the therapeutic relationship because yeah. you're battling through the defences a lot of the time. Yeah, 100% correct. So I look forward to talking about that. Okie dokie. See you on the next one. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.